Hey everybody, bit of a later start, but uh, wanted to do some cube today, so specifically there's a vintage cube in town, uh, and want to do some of that, so uh, it is a like a, a altered vintage cube. Uh, it's, again, when I was looking it up, I couldn't find, like, I could find a list on MTGO, but I couldn't find a write-up, so I had to go with, but, uh, so I went with Ryan, and had written, a, uh, over turf, had written a write-up based on the card list, uh, which, basically, the idea with this cube, uh, it's a Gabby and LSV have a different take on Vintage Cube. The idea on the cube is that it is removing a lot of the, uh, a number of the, like, overpowered, boring cards was the way, it, like, like, uh, bribery or fractured identity or, like, just these, like, extreme auto-win level cards that feel like crap to play against. Like Ashiok, uh, opposition agent, were on that list as well, um, as well as rebalancing uh, colors a little bit. I think white has a little bit more of a blank plan and a little bit more aggression, which white's very good at in uh, Vintage Cube. Uh, red has some like a, a few more kind of like wacky tools, but also like strong combo pieces to go with its red aggro plan. Um, Black changes are the ones I'm most interested in because there's a number of newer black cards that, like, look like they could make for some really interesting play. Sedgemore Witch, I believe, is the, like, Monastery Mentor. Uh, that one. Like, things like that. Uh, and then some, like, different unique uh, gold cards. Niv-Mizet uh, and Friends. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested to see how it plays, how different it is from Vintage Cube, if it's still... Like, obviously, it's still Vintage Cube at its core. Like, this is just Vintage Cube with, like, some of the numbers shifted around small, rather than something like the one that was like, yo, we just made the Super Blue, the, the Mengu Cube. Or, um, like, yo, it still has Moxin, it still has... Um, you know, th like, super high power level, Lotus, Time Walk, Recall, things like that. I'm sure Blue is still uh, best in show, as it were. So, anyway, with that all talked about, uh, let's... <laughs> Dark Raid to Sedgemore Witch, play Strixhaven Limited, yeah, there you go. Alright, so we want this Gus. Uh, edge cube, Phantom Lee Draft. Oh, 2000. Okay. So we've seen, like, when I think of a normal cube numbers, I think like 1,000 to 1,200. Uh, Legacy Cube had like 14 to 1,500. Some of the others have had, like, 500-ish. I think Vintage Cube proper is, like, 3,000-ish uh, when it comes around, around, like, end of December. So, people are here to Vintage Cube. <sighs> what... I guess the question of what we're looking for is a bigger one now. Again, a number of the, like, biggest non-power first pick options of, like, bribery, fractured identity, uh, things like that are, are off the table. So there's not going to be, like, that, you know, a, a couple of those I just named are my, like, biggest picks past the mocks. Now, the, uh, the, uh, 
so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we want to do here. Obviously, keep an eye on power, see what blue looks like, and then if blue looks a little too cut, um, or if we end up with something powerful off blue, uh, let me see where that leads. Hmm. What's after this? I didn't check what was after this. What's next week's cube? That's important to know, I suppose, because I, like I'm, I said, I'm planning on doing a longer, like, uh, uh, stream on the 6th. And knowing what the cube is, is kind of important so that I can, you know, stream it. So we'll have to see. Cube, cube. Hmm. So yeah, as usual, go into this, keep blue open if you can. Look for power, look for things that look really nice for you. There's ephemerate. Talismans, huh? Okay, I guess we have the full cycle of talismans. So that's easily doable. Um, I don't see anything in here that's like the most uh, like auto first pick level. Uh, no, Modern Horizons Two I think is out like mid June. It'll be like I think the th the eleventh or something like that. Hmm. Mystical Tutor is a grabbable bit, assuming we find something good for it. Talisman's fine. I don't want Shriek Mind, I don't want Finks, I don't want Koth, I don't want a Tarka. Tendrils and Bolus' Citadel in the same pack is a bit awkward. Bolus' Citadel is obviously, like, really powerful. Ephemerate, I think, feel like too early for that. Um, I really didn't want to give me that tutor. I'm going to go with the tutor and see if we can't find something to grab. Cradle? Huh. Okay. Cradle's an obvious thing here. Skyclave Apparition. Sheldred. Interesting choice to see Arcane Denial in here. A lot of creature removal. Uh, f so, Fracture is, like, unplayably bad in uh, Strixhaven Limited. That is not true outside of Strixhaven Limited. In Strixhaven Limited, there are, I think, like, a total of eight targets you would ever hit with this card. Like, total across all rarities that are any good. Like, there are more artifacts and enchantments and things in the set, but, like, there's, like, nothing you'd actually hit. Um, whereas here, like, everyone will have artifacts. Planeswalkers are very powerful. And in any, anything that looks like an enchantment that's getting played is also going to be very powerful. All right, uh, Elves of Deep Shadow. Kiki. Ooh, Spellbinder's good. Um, I probably should be working towards making this cradle good. Oh, it is June 3rd. Oh, I thought it was a week after June 3rd. I thought it was going to be the, ele the like, 11th or whatever. That's great. If Modern Horizons 2 is up for my dr my stream on the 6th, I know what I'll be doing for a good chunk of that. Uh, Elves of Deep Shadow. I kind of want to get this cradle good, and I kind of want to get in on it early. Kiki's a pick here. Click is fine. Um. Oh, that's why I was thinking 11th, because that was a paper release. Sure. Uh, what triumph is this? Green, blue, red. Crop rotation. Interesting. Nissa. Brainstorm. Thieving Skydiver. I love Thieving Skydiver. That card's really good. Crystal Shard? Wow. Hmm. 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 
Well... If they're gonna give me crop rotation... I should probably take it. Not used to seeing this card in cube. Ruinous Blast, wow. Elvish Mystic, Botanical Sanctum, Jace, Miskelk. Um, I want to get in on the... Like, I can see green having a little bit of... You know, like, we only see one green card in here. Even less than blue. So I want to get in on that now while we have this with the Cradle. Especially with our Cradle being super good. Um, you know, our, our, when I say super good, I mean super reliable to get with crop rotation. Like, minus one ourselves to get Cradle in a lot of circumstances, is going to be really worthwhile if we have some powerful things to follow up with. Um, I'm going to need... I, there was a Harmonize I saw, like, in... Probably, I think it was in the Mystical Tutor pack that I would want to table uh, because I want, like, a refresh with this. Uh, Traverse the Udenwald Skull Clamp. Don't hate Skull Clamp. Bloomin' Marsh. This Thassa isn't... That's, like, part of the Blink plan. Uh, Traverse. What do you do with Skull Clamp and try to get some other cards that work well with it? That fixes the card draw problem. Like I just mentioned that, like, you know, it might... Um, maybe we can find... Uh, if we're lucky, maybe we can find something like... Um, like a Hermit. That'd be good. Mono one drop. Sublime Epiphany, huh? So my brain has Sublime Epiphany written as an auto win card. Uh Vintage Cube, I think, has different standards. Is that better than just Garrick here? Garrick's very good with Cradle. Huh. This might be a mistake. Pyrogenic Ooze. This is actually a nice, uh... This is actually a really good card for us. Uh, the mana ability... The ability on here makes more creatures, and thus makes more bo bodies for Cradle. Um, Omnath. Turn Timber, Turn Timber Symbiosis is fine. Tangle Wire is fine. Kitchen Finks is fine. Tendrils made it. Citadel did not. Um, I'm going to grab the spell I can hide in my land because I like having spell I can hide in my land. We need to get some stuff that this can throw into play. Uh, let's grab that thicket. Rex Sage, your playable late Kiki. Pylath is a way to get a bunch of one one tokens, but like we can't ramp into it as well. Triome. Yeah. Okay, we got some like off fixing hanging out over there. This is the pile of cards that aren't currently in the deck. We'll put them over. We gotta leapfrog them. All right, they'll go over there for now. You go in the land, and this is like what the actual lines look like. Veil of Summer's in here? <laughs> yeah, okay. <coughs> Well, I don't think I'm... Hmm. Shit, am I picking that? There's a Worm Coil. I can't possibly be picking Veil over Worm Coil, right? Like, Worm Coil is a good payoff that gets up... Oh, I just noticed that these are in the wrong position. Um, Search for Tomorrow is also, like, a fine card that I'm super fine casting. Um, but I need some sort of payoff... Also, Grimonolith in here. Go very big. 
Veil of Summer, really? Another pick that might be incorrect. Okay, never mind. I do not feel bad about anything anymore. We are a, we're a cradle deck that contains a crater of behemoth, so. All right, now all we need is like one more top end bit, and then the rest is just fill out the curve. Give me a uh, green suns. Uh, green suns would be a great find. Um, a breeding pool wouldn't be bad either. Upheaval is obviously very good. Um, Pilgrim. Yeah, I'll do Pilgrim here. These full art triomes are, like, difficult for me to discern what they are. Titan's also a pick here, but, um, I like, I, I think because we're a cradle deck, we need these tiny creatures more than anything. Can I fit Leovold into the deck? Is that better than Elvis uh, Lanoir Elves? Hmm. I mean, we have three elves right now. I probably want four to five in the list total. Um, we don't currently have enough fixing for Leovold, but we're still in pack two. I think we can replace Lanoir Elves. I don't think we can replace the possible Leovold. Um, if I see anything that looks like fixing for Leovold, I'll pick that. Uh, Tracker or Explore, both... I'm sorry, what is this? Oh, that's neat. It's actually a really cool card. Um... Because, like, you just discard whatever you're going to play for the turn, and then it becomes draw a card, which is really powerful. Explore. Tracker is also cool. Sorry, Finhorn Elves. I said I'd replace you, but I need to pick up... Underground Sea here, too, is really nice. Damn. Um... Let's make it work. Let's make it happen. Misty Rainforest. Let's let's keep making it work. All right, this is nice. Ooh, well now we get a death ride for my troubles. Okay. Let me thrag tusk. I'm I'm not really. I'm so hold on. This cube, it was made for me. I'm sad to see that it's unplayable, but I love seeing it. You might be wondering, Jens, why would you say it's unplayable? Uh, ta talismans. Ooh, now we are talking... I'm going to take this Titan. I guess it's talismans instead of signets in here. All right, so we have 15 cards. We need to fix up the rest of the deck here. Um, 
We need more stuff in this range. Sure, I'm not gonna hate binding of the old gods. That card's actually quite fine. I want I want a green sun. I want some more things in the mid-range that are playable like four or so. Interesting. Hey Bob. And a Rager. Rager. Wow. Alright, D Tutor. Noble Hierarch Mere Battle Sphere. Birthing pot. I don't like pot here. D tutor. I love Rager. I'm just kind of amazed to see it in vintage cube. You know what I'm saying? You got Mole Drifter here too. Um, that's always nice to see. Love, love to see my Mole Drifter hanging out. Uh, Mole Drifter sadly is not the pick because there's three others I would want before Mole Drifter. Noble Hierarch is pretty goddamn big. D Tutor is easily doable, especially if we're doing the Leovold in here. I have the Blooming Marsh and the Bayou and the Fetch. Is Catcher Trium the good one? No, it is not. But we're playing it. Um, I'm probably on Demonic Tutor as a way to make this deck a lot more consistent. Like, late game tutor for Behemoth or tutor for whatever we need on Curve. Uh, Seagate Restoration, Verdant Catacombs. We have the Death Rites, or more fetches is really powerful for us. I also don't dislike Coercive Portal here as a way to uh, get things rolling. Right now, Skull Clamp is our biggest. It's like the Zothra one or whatever. I forget. I, 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 the naming convention on the Triomes is all very, very confusing because they all have the same mouthfeel. Tree Speaker. Oh my god, it's lightning heal. Oh my god, it's lightning healing. Now this is a storm outlet. I think I want Tree Speaker. Solemn's a good pick here too. Golos would be fine. Um, but I did say I wanted like one more creature at one. And Tree Speaker is like a soul ring. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Other times it dies and you, you, it's not soul ring. But. Limbering Falls, Toski? Hmm. Toski is like a copy of uh, uh, Edric. Hmm. Hmm. This is so close. It kill it, it's like the idea is it's like kill a talisman. Oh, the reach. Sack tribe elder scarab god. A lot of white still hanging out in here. Scarab God would not be unreasonable as a piece of top end for the deck, but it's hard for us to get, like, double activation. Uh, I like Sack Tribe, because if we don't want the land, it's also two cards. It's probably better than Explore. Hey, here, now we're talking. Okay, give me something to power into with this freaking Cradle. Okay, that's nice. That's our final piece of top end, and I want... This is too much to ask, but it is what I want right here. Oh, damn, I see that. Well. 
This is the Vivian that's a future site. Huh. That ain't bad. Do I want Coes instead? Just get the Eldrazi train going. Casualties of War is also really playable. Okay, Valiant Recovery. Hide this in my lands. I always like hiding things in my lands. Hiding a Regrowth. The Regrowth's actually quite good, so... Pod doesn't look much better with this problem. Uh, there's no other card I want in here. Um, take this Edict in case I need to Edict somebody's uh, power away. Boom. Ah, it's lightning. Nobody on Onyx. Okay, Beast Within is, like, reasonable. I don't want to be playing it, but I could. Pretty happy that Leovold looks like it'll work. Um, D Tutor, Death Right. But we don't have any reason to be mono for. I will cast this spell. I will 100% cast Casualties of War. Okay. This card is like a four for one. Okay, it looks like our removal's on the black side, and we actually probably do play like. I can bring in Deluge if we need to. Um, the tutors are not getting played. Um, you're not in the deck. Um, Life from the Loam isn't in the deck. Let's get all the lands out of here for the moment. You're a land. Or you're also a land. Um, sword doesn't seem interesting enough to me. In at least without uh. If it punches through my opponent, I care more. I'm gonna get rid of the Sundering Titan because we're now three colors. I don't want to have to blow up two of my lands to blow up my opponent's, like, planes and island. Um, I also probably don't need to play both those Eldrazi. I may, in fact, be overkill. Um, Toski's a question, but Toski's like Edric. Beast Within. Oh, ain't that great in the sense that, like, I have nothing that it's doing other than, uh... Like, Oath is creature land planes. Yeah, it's not permanent. So, like, it can't grab, like, binding or something like that. Um, We're not using it for fixing on anything. Tutor's fine. Leobold's fine. I like binding a lot, actually. Um... I need three cuts. How do I feel about Beast Within? I card, like, 80% of the time I feel awful casting it, and then 20% of the time it's very good. I don't know if that's true, but that's what my brain tells me. And, like, the the, like, how often it works and doesn't. Um, Rex Age is very good. Search can go down here. This is a deck that plays like one island, two forest. 
No, sorry, not too far. Too, too forced. Too swamp. I disagree. Leovold seems incredible. I, I, I like. Like, I'm a big fan of Leovold, especially when it's playing a rain chancellor, uh, like, position. Uh, also, my fixing is easily able to support Leovold. I've got, like, multiple fetches and fetchable bits on all of my, on everything. Like, I don't, why, why would I cut that card? <laughs> Like, yes, we don't, my deck doesn't contain three Wheel of Fortunes, but the card has more text than that, and opponents do draw cards. Um... So I should cut it? That's really, that, that, that's, a, I don't like that line. Like... I'm not abusing Rex Sage. I'm not abusing. I'm not abusing a lot of things in here. So, like, but also Leovold is a three-three body that draws me multiple cards. <laughs> um, I like Sack Tribe more than I like Explore because we got the Skull Clamp. We can go ahead and draw two up the Sack Tribe late game, whereas the Explore just sort of cycles. Not a huge fan of that. We already have a lot of things down below. I like Reach more than I like Explore, because it at least is a two-for-one. Not a huge fan of Reach here either, but it does fix up. Um, yeah, two Swamps, one Island. We likely don't need both Eldrazi. Um... figure which one I would cut. Like the draw four on Kozilek is a more useful front. But Ulamog's harder to answer. Not much, because indestructible means something in this cube, but not a lot. Depends on what color I think we're fighting, of course. Two Eldrazi's does open me up to some really wacky, bad-looking openers. Um... I'm clearly gonna play one. Then I guess, how many lands do I count the Turn Timber plus the Balliard Recovery as? Like, if I play 16 lands plus those two? Was like my, this is what because I've got both turn timber and Balgad recovery, which are both going to be in my land slots. Um, and then Bloom and Marsh, Breeding Pool, Cradle, Triome, Misty Rainforest, and Verdant Catacombs. Um, I would love to get away without playing Basic Island, but I have way too many things that fetch a basic for me to not play the Basic Island. So, if we go explore out, Ulamog out, keep Kozilek, then like board in Ulamog if it feels like our opponent actually doesn't, can't deal with an indestructible body, and then a big body. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe I actually want, maybe like indestructible body like if i'm playing what do i i don't really need a draw for if i'm playing a damn eldrazi right like once you're playing an eldrazi you're, you're uh you know you're already at something all right so let's add the basics yes yeah, so i have to add these which is a little awkward but i'm sorry was that it hold on was that asking for an illegal deck Hell yeah! Thanks, Suggested Tron. Love the illegal deck, Suggested Tron. Um. All right. Uh. 
Death Rite should be doing a lot of work here. Um, out of all my lands, there are only three plus one in Cradle that can't cast my uh, Mana Dorks. Search is a one drop, and then like Recovery and the seven are... Uh, Really interested to see crop rotation. It's like being able to crop rotate into our cradle. How long has Suggest Trump been doing that? Uh, beginning of time. Ever since I've been like playing MTGO, it'll suggest a 39. Like, I, I it, like, it doesn't know how to deal with hybrid pip counting is what I think. Yeah, we never found like a hermit or uh, something like that. Um, oh god, are they not in here? Um, TGO... No, oh, there's an article about the cube now. That's nice. Um, full cube list. Search. Hermit. No matching records found. No. Neither deep forest or a, a deranged hermit in here. Hmm. Weird. I mean, I guess it's it's an alt trust, you know. It's a uh, the alternate doesn't like squirrels. All right, let's ride. Okay, good news. This isn't unkeepable because it has an island and no green. It's unkeepable because it's a one-lander. This one's fine. We put the swamp on bottom. I get Garrick on turn three, and I can detutor for action. Kodama's reach is grabs like our last pieces of fixing. Swamp on bottom. Thank you. They're on a mold of six as well. All right, starting on blue. You got any like mox level things for me? Okay, you do. Cool. Our opponent did not mulligan. I always will, Pokecam. I always will. Alright. Well. Reach next turn. Go grab blue plus. Another black, I guess. Uh, just make sure I can cast casualties if I ever draw it. Blue Delta. Yep. Volcanic Island. Are you killing my mystic? Yes. If I detutor on two, what would I be tutoring for? I don't know. Like, what would I want to grab against an opponent who looks like this? I don't actually know what their full game plan is. The best card I think I'd be able to grab would be, like, throwing Leovold down and 
seeing if Leovold can hold against like they you know the colors there and have a lot of wheels. Next turn, I get to reach for the rest of my colors. And then I have Garrick plus Leovold on f on my, my five. I guess it's my turn four, not my five. Interesting. Reach resolving. So they've got to be like. I'm guessing there's blink shenanigans. I'm guessing red blue says combo. Like that's what red blue is in cube. It's sneak attack. It's Kiki. It's, you know, things like that. White says either splashing strong cards like swords or something like that, or uh, specifically fitting in something like, Resto. Garrick? Sure. All right, counterspell proper. I also got the cool Shatter Skull pass. I'm just going to the old highlights because Titania is an image too, and there's one where your opponent played Boxer Beat, and I don't think he thought he's a Lotus and Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sack Tribe just wants to draw cards here. I want Leovold down as like a refill. My current issue is if they're a combo kill, even though like, you know, land sneak attack is enough to just knock me out of the park, right? Hmm. A sorcery speed exarch, huh? Hmm. Well, that's not great. So we can land Leovold. It doesn't really assist us if we lose. Um, we can draw from Sack Tribe, but what does that get us? We definitely want the Beast Within in this matchup, so I have some sort of instant speed disruption against the combo.
All right, if they've got it, they've got it. We need to we need to bring in our more disruptive elements then. So they could play a four pod to five. Yeah, Resto or Powerful White options are the only two things that make sense in a combo list. Because Resto combos with Kiki and... Uh... Like, just Swords to Plowshare style effects. I just need them to show me they have it. That's enough. Don't need to be a jerk to make him do, do that 20 times. Uh, Beast Within. Soul Shatter? This is like an instant speed edict. I think it's us like things that interact on the board. And I think we need something like that to be able to interrupt. I didn't realize Sword still left in the main there um yeah worm coil titan might be fine here actually I care more about Titan than I do about, like, Eldrazi landing, because that's going to blow up three of their lands. And, like, that's a way we keep them under lock and key here. Uh, one more cut. Care about Toski. Care about Rex Age, that kills Pod. Um You don't care about the Ulamog. Alright. Yes, I'd like to play first. Yeah, this is fine. We need black mana, but Deathrite Shaman can actually get that for us so I'm a lead pilgrim though they have little bolts and such I want to lead with the one that's least relevant turn timber is probably getting played next turn just as something on the board also I don't want to lead with death right in case I do draw three okay so they do have a fetch if I led with a death right, they're likely to not use that fetch. So. Alright, yeah, there we are. There's a little bolt on our on our bit. Oh, thank you. All right, so I have Binding, I have D-Tutor, I have... We're in a very bad position if Deathrite falls. 
right? Because this almost looks like a hand where I'm going to have to... Chase, okay. Breeding pool is an extremely good draw there because it means I don't have to tutor for blue later. Um, I think I have to detutor for a fetch to grab black. Because then if I... Like, I, I, I want to kill that Jace too and binding it next turn might be worth it. But I need, if I don't have a reliable source of black mana, I think we're too far behind. Oh, binding can grab Bayou. is awkward because it doesn't give me a play next turn other than exiling Jace. Happy to see a fetch. Okay. They must have a play they needed that for. Swords or a burn spell? Yeah, burn. Okay. Uh, yep. So... We'll grab that bayou. All right. I'm going to gain Death Touch next turn. Okay. That was fine. Our current problem is that, like... Okay, so I've got five mana after a D-Tutor. I don't think I like Soul Shatter anymore because Pyromancer is a two-power thing, and that, like, is enough to, to sidestep the combo. Um, If I grab Beast Within, that gives me a, a, a way to interrupt... Oh, is it highest CMC? I thought it was highest power. Or am I thinking of Crackling Doom? When there's a million cards with the similar effect, I will fall into the hole every time. Alright, well now I don't need to detutor because they're not going to combo next turn. So I just need to play Biogenic Ooze and get a board. That's simple. Nice draw. I like that. Because this gets us a board that, like, they have trouble breaking. And they're not going to combo on four mana. That's not real. Not on five either. I think it's six is the amount you would need to combo off. And even that, like, you have to end step. Here's pod. Okay, we're podding up. 
I think Kiki comboed us in game one. All right. Um. Hmm. One card in hand. I believe I detutor for Wreck Sage. They might be holding up Counterspell, but that's their final card in hand. I'd be okay if that happened because it's their final card in hand. So let's go D tutor for Rex Age. I don't think this resolves. Actually, no, they should counter what we grab with it. I don't have double, I don't have double black. <laughs> like, that doesn't do anything. I can grab casualties of war and then lose the game two turns from now. Um, let me double check that. Soul Shatter. Just high CMC. Okay. Then I'm thinking of Crackle Doom. Counterspell proper? Counterspell proper. It was their final card. Okay. I figured that. It was like a 99, like, like basically 100% to me when they chose not to use pod. Um... That's what I figured. All right, so plus one, plus one, our team. So they have pot active. If they... They can't play a Kiki off the top. They can tutor for a three or a one. Their threes would be like tutoring for... Actually, they could, they could go up the chain and go three... F fuck. Okay. If I can f hold some disruption, that'd be nice. Can I resolve Sundering Titan here? Resolving Titan is kill three of their lands for two of mine. Cost them life to pod here. I kind of like cutting their own off mana. Well, I mean, killing them is what the biogenic ooze is for. Like, that's a threat that... I can just choose Bio as my forest. Well, 
Because, yeah, I can save my breeding pool. The problem is I get cut off black for this. But they have not shown days, but it would be a card that would fit in their deck. Uh, the problem is there's no other play I have that makes any sense. Right? Like, the rest of my hand is not cards that advance my, like, adv like either stop them or... Like, you know, anything like that. So they can go from Young Pyromancer to Exarch on Tap Pod to... Or are they just going to leave up a Counterspell? They're just going to leave up a Counterspell. Okay. Well, yeah, Catacombs can grab Basic Swamp. There are two of those in the list. Hmm. Toski can't be countered, but... I don't know what that does. Draws me zero cards because they chump with elementals the moment I do that. Toski can't bait out a counter spell. <laughs> they, they, they won't take it. Um, I think I have to try. Yeah, but Toski's irrelevant on this board, too. Like... There's no reason they would try it. I'm going to try this, even though it's likely to get miscalked or something. The rest of my hand is so blank, I need to resolve this card to be able to win this game. Okay. Okay. I probably don't throw the real ooze in there. Dun, dun, dun. They would have four block. I don't know, four, four. They lose all their creatures. The young pyromancer would be all they'd have left. Eleven. Next turn, I get to play. No, this is actually fine. If they want to spend their entire board of elementals killing the ooze, I think that's okay in this position. Yeah, I thought there was no way that resolved. So I can Catacombs for black, I can Toski next turn, I can Leovold next turn. Those are basically my two plays next turn. One of the things about magic is you have to, like, when you, uh... Like, you, there are some times where you just only have one possible line, and even if it's like, well, if they hold the have the counter, we lose, you can't choose a different line that results in you winning, you know? We are in Trump block for life mode, okay. Which they can do for a while, so. Makes sense. They need time. Um... They still might be able to win next turn.
it's possible they could win next turn. They'd have to pay, like, six life, but they could do it. The thing is, they don't have a lot of mana. Resolving the Titan is huge, because it cut them off of a lot of mana. Right? So, like... If we hadn't gotten the Titan through, they'd be on seven mana this turn, which I think would just be any creature, pod, combo kill me, right? Like, it doesn't matter. But here, like, they don't have the ability to, like, four up to Kiki and do anything relevant. Hell, they have to have a land to be able to even do four up to Kiki. And, like, yeah. They do have a full grip, but, like, it could look like our full grip, too. You know, a bunch of cards that don't really affect anything. You know, a couple of their burn spells, perhaps. Uh, you know, things like uh, Burst Lightning and uh, Firebolt are not really good here. Like, they don't do anything to the board. They make a token, but a lot of shrugging. Okay, pod, to, pod into a three. And the th if the three is Exarc, we can untap the pod... And then, or we can untap the talisman. A lot of thinking going on here. Understandably so. They have a lot of choices. Okay. So. Pod up to a three. And this is like Exarch untap. Yep, there's Exarch. Because if we untap the pod, we go to a four. Then on four, we can... Resto? But that doesn't get us anything else. What's the end of this chain? What's your four? Okay, another land. Do you have Pestermite too? If you actually have Pestermite too, I think you can win on the spot. Oh no, yep, they they got it. <laughs> As I said, there there are a number of lines they have that win them the game. So yeah, this is Exarch, untap a mana source, sack the resto, go grab Kiki, and I'm going to make them prove that Kiki's in their deck, not in their hand. And then from there, they've got the game. Okay, yeah. So, alright, uh, that is enough for me. Damn. I felt pretty good on the navigation of game two. I think we did everything in the route that we could have. Um, oh, the, right, the sword's in the deck still. I want, um... I think I just want Beast Within at the moment in here instead, as a bit. They had to make sure all the math is correct, like... You look at a hand, you know, it's it's like, can I actually do all this? And, like, the question is not simple in the sense that, like, you're, you're using pod multiple times in a turn. You're doing all sorts of shenanigans. MV.
the mana value. All right. Let's see how round two goes. Yes, I love to play first. I think this is fine. It's a little touch and go, I'll give it that. If it didn't have the Balliad Recovery, I wouldn't keep this. Uh, Balliad Recovery doesn't have the pay three. If it did, I would play turn two Leovold immediately. This does give us the option of turn two Leovold if we draw any land. Balliet has just come and tapped. This is not part of the mythic cycle. Okay. Is my death right dead? That'd, that'd be pretty, pretty bad. Ooh, okay. All right. Mm. Don't like that. Now let's get a point in. All right. So they have a tutored card. Let's hope it was mana fixing or something. Him? I see double black. I just assume him, right? Which all I would care about is don't hit my Leovold. Or we're going off? Okay, what's going on? Uh-huh. Time walk? You, you tutored, so... Oh, we're going Clouds Cape. Sure. sure, sure. Holy shit. That's a goddamn draw. I don't even need to use my uh, catacombs yet. Which is good, because I kind of want to hold that mana. Yes, I could have equipped Skull Clamp here, but... Like, Leofold draws enough cards. I don't need to do more. All right, so Riffling Cloudskate, uh, Riffling Cloudskate, there it is, uh, <laughs> has a bounce in three turns. This is just cares about targeting, so that'll draw. Um, Casualty's looking fine here. What's your four? Well, you're not edicting me. You're not causing us to draw. You're just going to make us both discard? Like, yeah, this can only be make us both discard. Every other choice would be horrible. 
I'll discard Worm Coil. Keep casualties. Casualties is looking better and better as time goes on here. Yeah, like, you could only make us discard. It's the only one that makes any sense. You can't draw two because of Leovold. And Edicting here would lose your rankle for my Deathrite Shaman, which I don't think you want. Yeah. All right. I'll discard Warm Coil. Um, I can anti reanimator it by like having Death Ride Shaman on tap, so that's not a problem. We have Eldrazi's we can discard. Holy shit, you're kidding me. Holy shit. Ooh, I, I don't know if I've seen this little interface. Uh, artifact, creature, land. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's game. That's, that's... Yosh. Yeah, they don't want to show me anything else. They don't want any... That's... Hmm. Offer the handshake right there. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, Leovold does work. Um, Soul Shatter. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Pokecap for calling the cradle at the top of the deck. You know I can't do it. I can only use my power for evil or comedy. And while that had some good comedy to it, it's too much on the side of good for us uh, to, to get. Uh, somebody asked if we have any other recursion in the deck. I can discard an Ulamog. Um, <laughs> and get everything back. Uh, I'm thinking about this Soul Shatter. Like, it's just a way to hit, like, like, a uh, rankle th and such. Um, Rexage is obviously real. Um, I kind of like everything else. Beast with it also, I think, serves too strong a purpose to get out of here, but. Mm -hmm. Is it good if I'm already ahead? And, like, our opponent has ways of getting rid of a, like, tiny little trick like that. Yeah. 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 The sand is fine if I draw one of my mana dorks. It's pretty slow and bad if I don't. Yeah. Okay, search makes this fine. I had cradle, but it was just nothing. If they thought sees here, it doesn't do with. Like, it, it, it sucks, clearly, because we lose, like, Leovold to Garrick, but, like, 
It's not end of the... Okay! Okay! All right! Okay! 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 All righty! Okay! Sure. Next turn we catacomb pass and then we I don't think I leave <laughs> Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure. You have three cards in hand, I'm not too bad on this. Um Discard the Kodama's Reach. Can they go down to two cards in hand? Search helps this hand a ton. They can't Liliana plus forever. Their hand is only three cards. They need a draw engine before they can keep doing that. Like, Rankle here would be reasonable. They can't Edict here not with Rankle. Just Impulse! Alright. I mean, just Impulsing. Next turn, I get to Garrick plus Leovold? If nothing happens? And I draw land, I suppose. Because I'm probably discarding by you. I would love to be able to get my whole hand out. Edict me. Okay. Catacombs, we're gonna go grab the Triome here. Okay, let's search. Hmm. Garrick minus might just be the play here. Oh, they have a... Okay. Well... Cool. <laughs> the reason I went with Garrick minus is because, like, Wrinkle can't full answer it. Uh, but now they're going to be playing both their cards in their hand and then Liliana minus plusing to get rid of Ooze. Riffling Cloudskate and then play your other. If you can't play your other, wow. <laughs> Blight Steel Claw. Okay.
I want to draw a mana dork. We are in... We really want to draw a one mana creature here. Hmm. Not really a one mana creature. It's kind of the opposite of that. So Leovold's going to get edicted here, but we'll draw a card off of it. Um, what am I looking for? They're on top deck mode, but they have the threat of just always being able to draw a... Uh, Yes, please. I will draw a card. Ooh, okay. Thoughts he's... Ha! <laughs> ah, all right, whatever. As long as they don't draw Tinker. So discarding Ulamog here is going to be really nice because it resets a lot of our best possible draws. Who's Garrick, Leovold, and D-Tutor all on that list. Those are all draws I would consider best possible. They're just going to play whatever they draw and then plus Liliana. Or if they can't play what they draw, they'll plus Liliana anyway. But I assume they'd be on four they're able to play anything they draw. Sure hope it ain't Tinker. It's Tinker. They just drew Tinker. Welp. That's pretty bad. My answer to that is drawing Soul Shatter. And nothing else. Yes, does, please resolve your Tinker. I know, I knew that it was Tinker. Um, so yeah, it's Soul Shatter and nothing else. There's no other card I can draw that possibly gets me out of this, because Riftwing can bounce anything that would be like a blocker, Liliana. Damn, the Liliana Plus is actually, this is bad for us. This shuffles in. Now we're, we go from 1 in 26 to 1 in 35. 2 in 35, I can draw D-Tutor. Better odds. Because now we have two live draws. That ain't it. All right. I can only summon it for them, not for me. Um, I don't like Beast Within when their win con is unkillable with Beast Within. Um... Sorry, Kaz, Pokey kept him already to that earlier today. <laughs> earlier. Um. Deluge? Oh, Deluge is awful because, like, like, we'd have to lose our entire board, but it does do it. Is that overboarding? This is extremely overboarding. Yes, I'd like to play first. Wow, love it. A plus.
All right. A lot of card advantage, a lot of... Uh, card draw. Uh, give me the bayou, please. So next turn I can reach. Okay. Yep. All right, so let's go. So we get ooze next turn to start the clock. This turn they go swamp seal pass and then next turn they combo off. That's not Swamp. You don't just have it, do you? Like, just Mox, Tinker, go? We're going to leave up negate and discard our dark steel. Blight steel. So this is discard blight steel. I think otherwise they would have comboed off here. That's just the feeling I get. Or they don't. I'd, I'd feel a lot better if they didn't and just didn't have anything right now. Okay. Um, keep fetching. And here's Ooze, uh, a threat that ends the game uh, 6, 8, 10 in three turns. Actually, I might be able to make that a two turn clock. We'll see. I think I might need help from them to make that a two-turn clock. Okay, draw a card off library. We've done a lot of fetching so far. That's been nice. we we'll grabbed four lands out of the deck. Right now there are, you know, that's eight of 17 with two of those lands in the deck still being like 
castable spells. Turn Timber could be good here. Again, I might have wanted the Sundering Titan as disruption, but it's okay. All right, bow down to Show me what's good. If they don't combo off next turn, I feel like the game is ours. If they do combo off next turn... Uh, mm, uh, you know, mm, uh, mm, well, okay. If they have seal, they can't go seal, tutor, mox, mox, play it combo because they tap two of their four land mana sources, four including the box. Um, Deluge for three is one of the most powerful plays they could make right now. Impulse. If they just impulse here, I'd feel pretty good. Um, D tutor, okay. D tutor for Mox. That's still not enough mana. They would have to go like Mox, a second Mox, or Soul Ring? Oh god, they don't have that, do they? I found a way to make a two-turn clock. So this is hitting number seven, down to 13. We make an ooze. And then end step, oozes get plus one, plus one. So we'll have five, four, three for 12, plus one with Elves of Deep Shadow for a, a, a kill. which means they have to take action. Activation is one and three green. Otherwise, I would not have played the turn the way I did.
I would have played the Blooming Marsh and the Stack Tribe Elder instead. Or just not played the Skull Clamp. All right. It is up to you to kill me. Okay, they draw their card again. We make our ooze. And then we have a we have presenting lethal damage. Here it is. You must combo off. I only have seven, so I can't resolve Crater Hoof on that draw. Um, we can chump block the uh, the dark, the blight steel, which is the you know play we will likely be doing. All right. You have to have something this turn or you lose. So. Full tapped out, full pass, F6. You're, you're in control. Do you have it? That looks like Tinker. Now, the funny thing would be, like, if they drew Blightsteel, you know? wonder if they have a backup Tinker target if that were to have happened. Then they're going to have Inquisition as a backup instead of a Counterspell? Lot of mass thinking over there. Understandable. We've we've we are pressuring, and that's what we needed to be doing here. Like, this is Tinker, right? Like, we, we're just trying to figure out how we're tapping three mana for Tinker. Interesting that we're leaving up Library. I would not expect that. Yep.
with D-Tutor and, like, library. I'm pretty sure they have it. Like... They're just trying to figure out what the hell they're doing with it. Yeah, so... This is game three. We won game one because they, uh, because we resolved casualties of war. We won game two. We lost game two to tinker off the top, and we we are currently in game three. Sadly, it doesn't mention that up top. It just says stage one, match two, which. Isn't anything that's not useful information. There it is. Do you, do you have it? I don't know what it is, but... Like, Lightning Greaves ain't enough. I block with the news. Um, of course, I wouldn't be able to win on the crackback. Yeah, like a little visible, like... Yeah, like a fight game KO. Like, you know, like a 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, you know, like that sort of thing. For somebody with two minutes on their timer, they sure are uh, taking a long think on, like, basic actions. Hidetsugu's second right gets a little icon. All right, then they have to discard. All right. So... I think what we do here is we start drawing with elves. Yeah, if I attacked all out here, they'd take eight, go to five, and then, like, crack back, kill me. I don't want that. I'd rather kill them on my crack back. If we can find Soul Scour, the game ends. Yeah, sure, you can draw a card. That's fine. Hmm. Kill me. <laughs> Thanks, D Tutor. <laughs> we had like six draws, it was kind of the cool thing there. Like, I could still tree speaker draw, um, and even sack drive draw, and then leave back two blockers. I would leave back two in case of a kill spell. Actually, I'd leave back everything. No reason to attack. Yeah. 
Who's this? You, you think you can stop the ooze? I don't know. I don't know about that. Ugin's a weird include in there, because Ugin isn't tutorable, and they didn't seem to have, like, Grim Monolith-style ramp. So... Maybe they did. Maybe they had, like, a Thran Dynamo level, you know, like, something like that in the deck. We just didn't see it, because they wanted to have, like, a way to ramp out the... the the bit. Anyway, we got there. Thanks, Soul Shatter. Soul Shatter. I'm interested in this. I'm, in, I'm, inter I'm interested in this. Hmm. Perm. Yeah, I mean, we saw a good chunk of their deck, right? Like, but like, they seemed like a deck that just ended on three with like Liliana and Rankle. They were using a lot of both players discard that's why i didn't think they'd be a deck that were building up to eight anyway um oof. this is awkward don't hurt Specifically, it lets me Toski on three, which is, like, fine. Litter? Oh, we going big. All right. We got some, like, Bolas Citadel Storm stuff coming up. They could just swamp Bola Citadel right here. All right. You now get to see why my hand is weird. I don't like it. Not excited that you get to see this. That's the wrong number. Hmm. Hmm. Sundering? Hmm. <laughs> well, the more things change. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, fine. We know how to do this. We know how to deal with this. It seems like our opponent's a little bit more dedicated to the plan.
Hmm. Are you ready for some real dumb garbage? Because I'm about to pay 11 life. Except for they have a brain maggot in their deck. They actually have disruption. You can see a opponent had Inquisition. Him? Talisman. I always think it's him off double black. Ch sure. Uh... Even though we might have to deluge next turn, I'm willing to make a beast here uh, because Garrick will be fine living through it. And if we don't have to deluge, I'd rather have pressure against this opponent. Like, pressure is way more important. Um. What? Excuse? Okay, Garrick's off. Huh. The heck's your token generator for that? Mirror ball? D tutor. D tutor here. Huh. A good deluge for one, but I kind of want to ooze. Um. I like. I mean, deluge for one also cuts off a mana from them.
next turn I can tutor for casualties and cast it. What the hell was game one? What was game one? What is this? What's happening? You know, I, it, I, I, sure, I've been edicted. You got me. Anyway, he's lethal next turn. If I need to, I can detutor for Crater Hoof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they'll have Death Touch? Oh, no. Oh, no. Death Touch Crater Hoof? Okay, what the hell was any of that? Um... Thinking deeply about that sword. Yeah, they don't have Imperial Seal tied to their opening hand, so clearly their deck is a lot less powerful. Um... Hmm. Uh, don't mind me, just adjusting. Sweet. A plus. Ooze has won us, like, what, all of our games? Is that what Ooze has done? It looks fine. It needs a little bit of, like, action, but it's got the ramp in spades. Let's see how this works out. Yeah, they're just a different deck than game one. Like, they're a... a, a, a they're a black-green deck 
like that randomly tinker has a tinker win con on a splash, right? Like just all of their artifact mana and like one thing taps for blue. Yeah. Rafael Esping. Yeah, okay, you're gonna eat it, sure. It's not really that bad. Like seeing D tutor. Hmm. This is a thumbnail for Liliana's YouTube video where she completely owns an Elvish Mystic. Sure. That's good. <laughs> uh, okay. This is very funny. Whoever activates the death right first, the other person can like use their death right to counter the death right. Um, we got D tutor. Next turn could be like D tutor for. We're passing? Alright, we want action then. D tutor for. Leovold? Crop rotation's nice. Um. D tutor for hmm. crop rotation's kind of awkward, which is funny. Um D tutor for We cast it. I just don't know what we're getting. Yeah, okay. It didn't matter in the sense that no matter what, Fiend was either stealing the tutor or stealing uh, the casualties. Right? Like, that doesn't change. Now, though, if I draw a way to kill that Fiend... The reason I grab casualties, by the way, is that they've been missing land drops.
This is very boring. Could cycle that, but I don't want to hand them the mana. That's the reasoning here. Like, they've been missing land drops. I, I, handing them the fourth land could break the stalemate. Okay. Am I playing the world's worst crater of Behemoth next turn? Maybe I can draw Ooze. Sure, let's explore. It's good. It's very, very good, but it's just explore here. And they don't have a land draw. Like, I don't think that does anything really big here. Sure. So the reason I have to leave my death right untapped is in case they draw a fetch land, I need to be able to fight them on it. Four cards in hand. Oh, this is the worst critter of behemoth in the world. <laughs> I should have just grabbed Leovold, I think. They would have blood th chiefs thirsted. I guess we would have just drawn one card. Maybe that's not actually really big. Fetches, huh? This has got to be a bad idea. History's worst crater hoof behemoth. Should not have fetched. That was, a, that, that was an actual mistake. That death right might punish me for it. Sure. Yeah, they're going to punish me for it. Like, at this point, I want to, like, just thin my deck. Handing them the fifth mana was a mistake, though, flat. Like, they clearly have some... Like, they've been sitting on f four mana for ages. We need... They're only a old... Oh, ha. Huh? Okay. Ooze? 
well. You ready for the biggest possible tree speaker? One more. All right, then you're just gonna... Ooh! Okay. We doing the thing, right? This is the tinker, right? Like that's grabbing Tinker, and then they're gonna just do the thing. Like, it's pretty simple. Channel? No. It's Channel. They go to one for Blightsteel. Okay, Ugin, sure. Ugin's quite good. Okay. I'm just doing kind of a look at what we want. Soul Shatter's good. Deluge is good. Balagad Recovery is good. I don't think I grab Cradle here, because Cradle doesn't do anything. I think we just grab... a Fetch, and then Fetch. Uh, yeah, okay. Sometimes you take all of the actions to to lower the odds and you cannot avoid the 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 one in six. Think this turn is the turn I need to draw answer to Ugin, which is three cards. Because that draw seven is likely just to end the game. If I draw Balagad Recovery, it doesn't do anything because Deathrite Shaman's untapped, so they can just remove the target. If we draw a removal spell for Mesmeric Fiend, we can kill Fiend, and then we can use casualties. Okay.
You, you, you. Alright. Sometimes the deck thinning does get there. <sighs> then they're going to remove our crater roof so we can't regrow it. Which is a very smart choice. All right. So they shouldn't have a lot to do with their hand. Uh, they probably just have like either a removal or like a dork they can play. Revoker. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So no, oh no. Uh, don't don't force the draw. Okay. All right. The problem was having the tutor there would have lost us the game because we wouldn't have been able to afford the... Uh, anyway, they're going to tinker? You know, okay. I left up the soul shatter in case they tinker this thing away. There's still Gaia's Cradle. Ugh, well. Damn, that's good. Okay. Sure. At this point, most cards in our decks are very good draws because our deck contains, like, two lands and a bunch of pretty big booms. Opponents at seven. Okay, land. They're going to be seeing land for a while now. They've been... Look at how many cards they've gone through. Like, legit cards. Right? Their graveyard has one land, so 10 real cards. Uh, 11 real cards. So if, between their hand and deck, the rest of their deck has like 12. And then there's like 11 land left. So they have a lot of dead draws, whereas we just don't. As long as it's, it is a one-to-one... -one, which, like, obviously their Harmonize uh, is better than that. Uh, Sundering Titan is an auto-win, because it kills three of their lands, and then if it dies, it kills two of their lands. Nissa? Green Sun's four? Bring the light for three. Do you have your own? Uh... Hmm. Not much like that. What was that noise? That was weird. Anyway, we're down to one dead draw in the deck. It's just Gaia's Cradle. It's the only land left in the deck. That's very bad.
What on earth are you willing to Imperial Seal for right now? Holy shit. Because you'll go to one if you don't block my Sage. So the card must be game-winning on the spot. Hmm... Camo? Children. Sure. Yeah, I'm passing up on that Lumbering Falls was a, a pretty bad, uh, bad one, wasn't it, Burnhead? <sighs> okay. Does that do anything? Does this do anything? I don't think this does anything. I might grab the soul shatter. In case they land, Crater Hoof. That, this is what I'm defending against, is land Crater Hoof. My triumph, no! So that should lock out anything I can think of, especially the removal spell in the pocket. Holy fuck! <laughs> Go to one! Nice try!
We could have avoided the life loss had I used that at instant speed. Just as a, a heads up. But I like it better at us both being at one. You can respond to the trigger uh, with killing it, and then it's not in play to see the creatures die. Ooh, but it's very funny if we're both at one life to end the game, so I let it go. <laughs> Holy shit. So if I would have chosen to, like, regrowth for a body to try to up my clock, I would have died. <laughs> Perfect. That is magic, the goddamn gathering right there. I feel very good about navigation on it. Um, there was a mistake where I fetched when I shouldn't have. Um, there was like a couple turns with, where I could have fought them a little harder with death right. But in the end... I think we had we we did everything we needed to. So Yeah, Sultai Slugfest. All right. Anyway, that's magic for y'all. So uh we're going to be doing more of this on Tuesday as a heads up. So if you're looking forward to some more uh alternative vintage cube, Tuesday is the day for you. Um yeah. So anyway, thank y'all for joining. I know today is an odd time for a stream. Usually it's a little earlier than uh, than it was today, but worked out very well. Um, yeah, if you want to catch more, you can always follow, see when you're live, subscribe, get the cool skulls and slimes. Thank you everybody who has subscribed and everyone who's just here having a good time. Um, upcoming streams, uh, nothing tomorrow, nothing Monday uh, for Memorial Day. Um... Tuesday uh, will be this. Wednesday is going to be start of disc three, um, which, if I remember right, should involve more cards, as it always does. Uh, and then the big event on the 6th is where I'm going to have a long uh, birthday celebration stream that will be starting probably noon on the 6th and just going all day. Have a number of bits. We'll probably get some Modern Horizons 2 in there. Um... I'm glad I waited to, to light, light up the list, because now I know Modern Horizons will be on MTGO. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all for joining. Have a good night, everybody.